Hello and welcome to episode 11 of Meet the Horses. Tonight I have one of my primary horses to share with you. So let's check it out. Okay, here she is. This is Nakona. Isn't she just gorgeous? Nakona was born in 2007. My very good friend, they used to breed Appaloosas, and so that's where Nakona came from, along with several other Appaloosas that I've owned over the years. And I wanted this horse so bad, but I was not, um, it was not a time in my life where I, I could get another horse. So, um, but a client of mine ended up purchasing her as a yearling, and the plan was is she was going to come to me for training. So when Nakona was a yearling, I did go and work with her a little bit just to get her started on her training. When she was two, my client decided that she, because of, of health reasons, she needed to sell Nakona. So I had first dibs to purchase her, and at that point... Then I was in more of a position to bring on another horse. My plan was to use her in my lesson program. And, you know, after I got her, I mean, she was only two, so I had some time to work with her. But, um, gosh, I just absolutely loved her. <laughs> just loved her right from the start. So Nakona came to live with me in 2009. At the time, I was boarding her and the, my other horses um, at a friend's place. And then in 2010 is when we bought our farm. And so Nakona was one of the, the first horses to come to my barn. And she was also one of the very first horses that I started in this arena. So Nakona was, let's see, I started her in 2011. Spring of 2011 is when she was started. And she was a very easy... Um, you know, she was either super complicated with things or really easy with things. The things that she was okay with, she was really okay with. The things that she was not okay with, she was really not okay with. So she had a hard time with a cinch for quite a while. Um, very, very good for everything else. She doesn't care if she's by herself or with other horses. She's boss mare. Um, you know, she's great for standing and being groomed and her groundwork was really good. Um, for the most part, I had some, when she was a yearling, she was pretty reactive to things. I remember having a lunge line and the lunge line was kind of dragging on the ground and she went straight up in the air. I don't know if she thought it was a snake or what it was, but every time she saw that line move on the ground, she'd go straight up in the air. So that's the kind of silly stuff that Nakona used to do. And so... Um, when I got her started here, <laughs> when I got her started, her big quirk being saddled was the first step she would take after the cinch was snug, she would typically go straight in the air. And that went on for a long time. And it was, it was no big deal. I mean, I just knew that every time she was going to be saddled, she would just rear up and then she'd be fine. And so that went on for probably a month. And then she just kind of got over it. And I I spent, oh, I don't know, probably 90, 90 days or so. I put some good solid time on her um, when she was, that spring of when she was four. And then, you know, rode her as much as I could. And then I got pregnant. And so she was no longer one that I was willing to ride because, you know, like Nika and some of my my other horses that I had had for a long time that were very seasoned, I was comfortable riding them, but I didn't want to ride young, unpredictable horses when I was pregnant. So she kind of sat for a little bit. Um, I had a friend of mine ride her some, and then when I felt like she was ready, she was put into my lesson program. Um, now, the thing with Nakona is she's very sensitive, but she also gets confused very easy. So she really didn't like the inconsistency of lessons. Um, she would struggle with her leads. She had a lot of balance issues. Um, she just really, this horse was not cut out to be a lesson horse, plain and simple. And so I had one of my students, a more advanced student, lease her for a while. I had a couple different people lease her for a while, people that were very patient with her and good with her. 
So the folks that leased her, one went away to college and then the other one, she bought her own horse. So after that, I just didn't really want to lease her anymore. And so I wanted to take the time and spend with her and work on the things that I knew she needed work on and just get her out of my program completely. So I spent, I don't know, four or five years being the only person to ride this horse. And I hauled her to a ton of clinics. I went and rode with um, Buck Braneman and Lee Smith and Barb Gerbitz and just went to a lot of really great clinics, hauled her all over, worked on some cow working clinics, horsemanship clinics. Nakona and I did a little bit of showing. I had a, a jumping trainer that was coming to my barn and I really had a good time doing a little bit of jumping with her. Lots of trail riding. That's just kind of, you know, I spent like I said, four to five years riding her. I had a heck of a time finding saddles to fit her. So I eventually kind of gave up on that because I felt like nothing that I put on her was, was really a good match. So I gave up and just started riding her bareback. And I feel like doing that got my, my riding kind of hit a new level when I started doing that. So I would ride her and just a halter and bareback, sometimes, you know, completely bridleless. I have a couple of videos. If you look at her playlist, you'll find those videos. And I just had a lot of fun with this horse for a long time. I did have the worst fall I've ever had on this horse. We were jumping and there is a short, it's in her playlist. And that was, that was pretty scary. It took me a while to get past that. I, my confidence kind of took a dive for a little while and, but we worked through it. I worked through it. I worked through it with her, um, conquered those fears, did a little jumping again. You know, I don't have any fear with that anymore, but it was something that was kind of scary. And, but when that sort of stuff happens, and I think it happens to a lot of people, you just work through it. So another time that I fell off of Nakona was, well, not a fall. She bucked me off. So I had, um, been, I was doing a clinic as a fundraiser for our local animal shelter. And I had a whole pile of my kids there. And we were playing a game called Noodle Tag. And it's where everybody has water noodles. And there was one girl that was a little nervous to speed up. And so I was just kind of helping her by, I was chasing her, okay? So I, I kind of was staying far enough back. I was encouraging her to go faster, but yet letting her do it at her own speed kind of thing. So I'm like pretend chasing her. And so she started to speed up and I'm like, oh wow, she's really going. So then I had to speed up and I know for a fact, um, it was my saddle fit. My saddle definitely did not fit this, you know, cute little short backed mare. Um, and I had a rear cinch on as well. And it just was a bad combination. And so once we started going, you know, we were at a full, full gallop and here I have a water noodle and I'm like leaning over trying to tag this gal with this water noodle and Nakona at a full speed gallop, put her head down and oh my gosh, did she buck. I have never ridden a buck like that at that speed. So, um, that was pretty terrible. And she bucked, I stayed on her a couple, like she bucked a couple of times and I, I flew up in the air and I landed on the saddle horn. I thought for sure I broke my pelvis. Um, and then the next buck I landed on the ground and I remember sitting there and just being like, oh my gosh, the amount of pain that I'm experiencing right now, something has got to be broken. And I, I, I was able to stand up and I stood there for a little bit and the pain sort of subsided. Um, but then I think I had so much adrenaline going too that, um, I just jumped up and got back on her and I was like, by golly, we're going to go run around some more because you're not going to dump me off. So it was good that I got back on and I rode her through that and because it didn't do anything to my confidence. Um, if anything, it made me more confident because I did get back on and I did work through the problem that I had. But anyway, so I, I galloped her around a little bit and was like, okay, I'm, I'm confident that that's not going to be, you know, that's not an issue now. Like I don't have to worry about her just randomly dumping me off because we we're galloping. So, but the next day we went on a trail ride for this fundraiser and we did like 15 miles and oh my gosh, I was so sore. I was so 
horribly sore. That was pretty terrible. Once I once I really put two and two together and thought, you know, man, I, I think my saddle doesn't fit her. I really learned a lot about saddle fit from that situation. And I started thinking a little bit differently as to what what I do and how I go about that. She's definitely not for a beginner. Um, she does take a little bit more. She's a little bit more tricky. Some people aren't a big fan of Appaloosas and they say that they're like mules. And honestly, to me, mules are smarter than horses. Mules are smarter than a lot of humans, I think. And I feel like Appaloosas come very close behind mules as far as being smart. So she's very intelligent. Um, but they kind of, you know, it's kind of on their terms. The self-preservation is just a little bit different. And um, so, yeah, I think a lot of people don't like Appaloosas because they're smarter. They're really cool horses. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> Love my Appaloosas. I always have. Like I said, Nakona was a lesson horse for several years. And, you know, she just really didn't like it. This horse needed consistency. And um, she got to a point where... Like when I started riding her, she was so sticky. Her feet were so sticky. And what I mean by that is like you ask her to go and there's nothing. There's nothing. She would pull back while tied. We had a situation where she pulled back. Um, she pulled back while tied and she ripped down an entire wall <laughs> and then took off with it. So that was kind of like, okay, um, I think that she's just going to be my horse now for a while. And, you know, it worked out great because I really, I, I saw all these little things in her that I'm like, gosh, I need to fix these things. And having her just become my horse for a while was awesome because I was able to work through all the issues and I was able to just really have a great time with this horse. She's very, she's very athletic, even for being, you know, this big old belly on her. You know, people ask me all the time if she's pregnant and no, she's not pregnant. She's a very easy keeper. She can live on air. <laughs> I'm certain of it. She's a very, very easy to keep horse. So, but it doesn't matter how much I ride this horse. I feel like she always looks like this. So it's just kind of her shape and that's just fine. But gosh, is she hard to fit a saddle too? Oh my gosh. So, but she's wonderful to ride bareback. Absolutely love riding her bareback. A couple of years ago, I kind of got to the point where, you know, I'm trying to, you know, work with Manzer a little bit. I've got Blossom that I'm trying to work with and some other horses that were in for training and a lot, just a lot going on. And I'm like, I am not riding this horse as much as I want to. With that being said, I'm like, she's at a level that I'm really, really, really happy with where she's at. And, you know, I had really taken a liking to dressage work. And so this horse I feel is the one that just kind of got me to fall in love with dressage. And, but I was not able to ride her enough for her physique. <laughs> so, you know, anytime that I would take her out and want to ride her, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to just walk her and trot her. If she canters, she's just going to be huffing and puffing. And I can't do that to her. And I wasn't able to dedicate the time that I needed to this horse. So I had one of my students um, kind of working her way up through my program. She was leasing um, my pony muffin and was ready for the next step up. And I'm like, this kid has great hands. She's, um, she's very patient. She's very kind. And I just really think that she has what it takes to be the next person for this horse. So I asked her, um, I asked her to start riding her and gosh, it's a perfect fit. So it's nice because I can come out and I can get on this horse. She's still one of my primary horses. I can get on her and ride her anytime I want. And I know that she's in decent shape. So it's nice because I'm not worried about my poor horse, you know, being winded or, and I don't have to worry about her getting injured. If I want to take her on a trail ride, she can go and I'm not concerned about that because I firmly believe that you know, a horse needs to be in shape. If you're going to go ride the way you want to ride, your horse needs to be in shape. So you don't just go pull them out of the pasture and ride the heck out of them. So I love that. I love that I can take her out. I can go on a trail ride and I'm not worried about her at all. She is a very, very, very special horse to me. So I was really hoping um, we bred her this past summer and to a mammoth jack. Um, so I was really hoping to have a polka dotted mule baby, but she didn't take. So that was kind of sad, but maybe we'll try again in the future. I don't know. Maybe we'll, maybe we won't. <laughs> so, but Nakona now it's fun because I see her, you know, she, 
goes to all the shows and she does a little bit of barrel racing, a little bit of jumping. She does great in English pleasure, Western pleasure, a um, little bit of raining classes. She does everything. And it's so fun to watch this kid um, go out and win all these really awesome things on this horse that I have spent so much time with. And I just love it. I absolutely love it. So that's Nakona. And isn't she just one of the most beautiful horses you've ever seen? <laughs> I just love her. Another thing too that's really cute about her is she's like a protector of the ponies. It's really cute because she'll be just standing there and she'll have Bear, Lucky, and Daffodil, our three Welsh ponies, all standing right next to her. She just loves them. And she's really good at the minis too. I had her with the minis for a while because, um, well, because she's she's a little round and the minis are kind of round. And so they did t well together weight-wise. <laughs> but um, even when I had Daisy and Rosie, my minis out with the herd, they always hung out with her. She is just such a great protector of the ponies. Even though she can be such a um, oh, she can be so mean to some of the other horses, but she is always super sweet to those ponies. And I love that about her, you know, and she's not necessarily brave. So like being out on a trail ride, if she's the lead horse, she's kind of like a little worried. So you have to be, you have to be brave for her in those situations. Um, so she can be a little bit insecure about stuff like that, but all in all, she's super fun and I wouldn't trade her for anything. All right. I think that's all I have to say about Nakona. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.